Oh, hello. You guys actually caught me at a bad time. I'll talk to you guys later. Matter of fact, I can't be bothered right now, okay? Just kidding. How are you this morning? It's Inauguration Day, American Inauguration Day here in Thailand. I'm looking out at a bright, bright sun. It's It's been over 80 degrees. Yesterday it was over 90 degrees Fahrenheit here, and we call this winter. Do you guys envy me at all? Maybe just a little bit. I did leave a lot to come over here from the U.S. to serve the Lord. The Bible says, He who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Not all of us are called overseas to bear witness to the Lord's light, but some of us are. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. All of us are called to bear witness, if we know Jesus, to his light, wherever we are. So those of you in the U.S., the biggest melting pot on earth, are called to witness for Jesus also, to bear witness to his light. So get out and do it, brothers and sisters. Um, today's video, this is video number three. The first video was my story, that what the Lord did for me when he raised me from the pit, May 28, 2010. Second video is kind of the top two, top couple of lessons learned over the past six years following Jesus. And this is video number three, and this one's focused on envy. I've spent a lot of the past 39 years looking to the left and looking to the right at other people, rather than always focusing on the Lord as we should do. Using other people's mistakes, for example, as, as justification for failures, looking to other people, wondering why they have more, let's say, financially, for example, than what I have. The Bible calls Satan the god of this world, the god of this world system, but we know that all power in heaven and earth has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ, and Satan has no dominion, no power over him, that's for sure. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So if the Lord can give us anything, why doesn't he make us all rich? The Bible does not promise that he will make us all rich. It does promise that he'll give us peace, that he'll meet our needs, he'll give us abundant life. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We can stand on the promises of God that we find in his word. He does not promise to make all of us rich. And maybe in some cases that's for the best. We have examples in the Bible, reasons why, perhaps, the Lord doesn't make us all rich. The Israelites, for example, the Lord parted the Red Seas and, and released them from bondage, from bondage in Egypt, and parted the Red Seas for them, and they received bountiful blessing, abundance. And they got across and, and praised the Lord at first, but over time, they forgot the Lord and, and began to complain. We could also use the U.S. as an example that many folks came, went over from Europe in the beginning to start a new life in the new world for the primary purpose of being free to worship Jesus. And when they did so, the Lord brought abundant, abundant blessing. And eventually we turned our back in so many ways on him. It's human nature. It's what we do as human beings. And so we can cite a couple of examples there, a couple of reasons why the Lord might, might not make millionaires of all of his people here on earth. We're not citizens of this earth. We're citizens of heaven. We're just sojourning here on earth for a, on a temporary basis. But the Bible says that... Why am I going blank here? The Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. One song that the Lord brings back to mind over and over in my life over the past few years as I'm thinking of things like this is an old gospel song. Father along we'll know all about. Father along will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. 
will understand it all by and by. So in this video, obviously, we're talking to Christians, to believers who've repented and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this song, farther along, references the next in the next part of the song, it says, when we see Jesus coming in glory, when the Lord comes back, and those who are alive and remain, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who've been following him, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and we will see him face to face and be made like him. We will receive a glorified body. We'll have answers to the questions that we have. But until then, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We're to acknowledge the sovereignty of God and his plan, that he knows what's best for us, and to trust him and be faithful to him. In this video, I'm preaching just as much to myself as I'm preaching to you folks. Hang in there, brothers and sisters, and I'll do the same. God bless.